and welcome to the Gazette discussion for 12 July 2021. My name is Harsh Singh and in this discussion we will cover many interesting topics. The first one and the featured news is on the role of cooperatives in COVID times. This is in context of the new cooperatives ministry that has been formed. In this discussion we will cover what is the meaning of cooperatives, is there a need for us to have a cooperatives ministry and what are the challenges which lie ahead of this ministry. The second video will contain rest of the articles. Rest of the articles include this day in history, an important day for people who smoke cigarette. New snapshots, three important updates that we have for you today. The first one relate to Interpol and the formation of a strategy against ransomware threats. We will also come to know here about Italian Mafia. Second one is about OPEC's output pact and the issue that UAE has raised here. The third one is authorized economic operator program which is an important program India is running for increasing its international trade. Image of the day relates to Italian glacier called as Presena Glacier. Terms and concepts. We have four important terms and concepts for you today. The first one is about lymphatic filariasis and important update regarding that. The second one is about GI certified Bhalia wheat. Where is the Bhal region? Gujarat. We will study about it. The third one is Sparsh, an important pension program by the Ministry of Defense. And the fourth, fourth one relates to BRICS Cooperation in Innovation, STI, Science, Technology and Innovation Cooperation. Three editorials for you today. First one is on participation of Italy along with India and Japan in Indo-Pacific. The second one relates to criticism of UAPA and the third one is about the same Ministry of Cooperation and some details about its history. Case study of the day, an interesting case study about India Biodiversity Awards, the person from Kerala who won it, the Tuba Man of India. Let's start the discussion. This day in history, 12 July belongs to the people who do not smoke. This is the day on which Leroy Burney, right, the Surgeon General, he declared that excessive cigarette smoking can cause lung cancer. And this was, this move, this declaration was opposed by who? Yes, the tobacco industry, the tobacco industry research committee opposed this declaration. Why? Because it spoils the uh, economy of tobacco. And why is this news relevant till date? It is relevant to understand the impact of lobby groups, the impact of lobby groups on the health of people. Even till date, important tobacco lobby companies, organizations, they lobby the government to ensure that the government does not go strict against the, uh, the consumption of cigarette and tobacco. All right, moving to the new snapshots. The first snapshot is on Interpol meet the global strategy against growing ransomware threat. Okay, so here we understand what is ransomware and what is Interpol participation here, right? So ransomware is a computer technology by which the victim's computer is completely hacked. After hacking the computer, there is no flow of information, no work done on that network and the hacker ensures that the demand for a ransom and that is why it is called as ransomware. It is not called as a malware, it is not called as a virus, it is called as a ransomware because the hackers demand for a ransom and then is when they release the computer from the ransomware attack, right? So this is how this uh, operation succeeds from the perspective of a hacker, right? Important ransomware have been WannaCry and Crypto Lock, right? So this is how it proceeds. Now, important to note is that India is one of the countries which has been affected majorly through these attacks. In fact, in the last one year, India has had to pay three times, as much as three times what it used to pay to ransom wares, right? So India needs to buck up in terms of securing its internet network. About Interpol, now Interpol, its full form is International Criminal Police Organization. International Criminal Police Organization. It was formed in the year 1923, approaching almost 100 years in its formation and therefore again important from UPSC perspective. What about it? What about it is that the Interpol operates through the network of NCB. This is not Narcotics Control Bureau of India. This is called as the National Center Bureaus. Right. Right. So Interpol has got NCB's network all throughout the world in all the countries and India's NCB is operated through CBI. Right. So the coordinating agency is also operated through CBI. So what happens is international police 
the international criminal police for example there are offenders economic offenders people who have been uh, who have assassinated important people so if they have run away uh, out of a country international police is the one which locates it right so its headquarter is in uh, lyon france and the agencies the police agencies throughout the world they coordinate in participation here right so this is how ncbs directly coordinate with the interpol now interpol three important declarations have been done in this meet the first one relates to the control of the malware uh, uh, the control of the ransomware the second one is 24 by 7 i now through this initiative there will be secure communication network formed and this secure network communication will be 24 7 operational right so that law enforcement so that faster execution of all the uh, anti-criminal activities is done and the third one is very interesting the third one is about ICANN right what is ICANN now ICANN is an important initiative of the Interpol and what do they want they want to catch the Italian Mafia so let's look at it ICANN stands for the Interpol cooperation against Drangheta Drangheta is an important Mafia in Italy. This is the only Italian mafia which is spread throughout the whole world. So they participate in drugs, they participate in the trafficking of people, they participate in money laundering, they participate in all kind of illegal activities carried out at the deep web. Right? We have discussed deep web in the previous Gazer videos. So the important state at which they participate is state of Calabria in the Italian peninsula. So this is the country Italy and this is the Italian peninsula. This is the place from where they largely operate. So the idea is to ensure that there is content, there is access and there is action against this mafia, this Italian mafia. And this is the operation I can right? also held by Italy. right? So this is the operation. We have also we also see here that there is an increase in the number of attacks as it says 41 41 percent beginning in this particular year India is one of the most affected countries as I mentioned a while back also ransomware attacks have significant financial repercussions as mentioned right so the amount India has paid in terms of ransomware has tripled in the last one year the next snapshot is on OPEC's output pact proposal right OPEC has proposed that there be an increase in the production of oil through the OPEC and OPEC plus countries. So this is where we understand what are the OPEC countries. We have a set of 12 countries which are OPEC countries and then we have an organization called as OPEC plus some countries for example Russia, Mexico, right? some countries in Africa and Southeast Asia they are part of OPEC plus. What do they do? They form an important cartel. right? This cartel ensures that the prices and production of the oil and petroleum products are regulated throughout the world. This is how they ensure that they earn a decent amount of money while they produce oil and petro petroleum resources. What has happened during these COVID times? The first impact of COVID has been on the economy. right? It has stopped the economy all around the world. Imagine the time when economy has been stopped but oil production is still happening. If oil production is still happening, then the, there will be reduce in the price of oil around the world, the crude price prices, right? And therefore, the amount of money these countries will get will decrease because there is less demand but more supply. So all these countries together said, okay, we will decrease the supply. There was some discord between Russia and Saudi Arabia last year over how much to decrease, right? However, they ensured that they decrease the price. So they kept getting decent amount of money because prices were there for the oil. And there was decreased supply also but decreased demand as well but now as economy has started to grow back to get back up these countries are regulating the prices and they're slowly and steadily also increasing the prices and this is why we see in india that there is increase in the price of petroleum products because demand is more but supply is still restricted so after two years after almost two years these countries have said that yes we will start increasing the oil prices now but the latest development is that UAE says that they are not in agreement with this increase in price. So let us know what is it about. Now the news is that the UAE does not agree with the OPEC oil cartel and allied producing countries to extend how much increase of the production should be there. right? So this is what the news is, the failure of reaching to an agreement. right? The two year agreement between all these countries was established and it, it was supposed to get extended for six more months right 
Now, the initial production cut was 22%, right? So, this was the cut which was decided by these nations and these are the OPEC countries, right? But now, they have agreed to gradually increase the production, right? But the contention of UAE is that the reference output mentioned for UAE is not up to the mark. Now, all countries were designated, were given some targets. This is the target. This is the price baseline from which you will increase your production by say 10% or 15%, right? But the target, the baseline used for UAE was not adequate. The baseline used was below the mark and therefore even if UAE increased the prices, increase the production, it would not get proper remuneration, proper amount and proper production of oil. It would be at loss of UAE. So therefore UAE says that you change our baseline and that is how we will be able to produce effectively and gain remuneration. So this is the discord between UAE and other countries. But in this discord, we understood the whole mechanics of OPEC and OPEC plus. So UAE asked to increase the baseline production values. Now what is the impact of all this on India. The impact of all this on India is on the inflation rate and the economy. These days we see increase in prices of oil as much as 105 rupees uh, petrol, right? We have seen that there has been an around 20% increase in the price of the petroleum products in India. Why is this so? It is so because of the international rates of uh, oil decided by OPEC and OPEC plus exactly and directly dealing with OPEC and OPEC plus. So if this is all about timing matching the exact timing, right? If the countries OPEC plus decides to increase the prices slowly, it will be uh, resultant into more inflation for the country. On the other hand, if they decide to increase the rates, increase the production faster, then India will have decreased prices of oil and oil products. So this is what the news is about. Snapshot 3. Snapshot 3 is about authorized economic operators program. Now. This is a program run by World Custom Organization. What does it do? World Custom Organization ensures that all the products that are transferred internationally between two countries, they are received, they are products which are not illegal, right? Proper custom duties, revenues are taken by the government and there is a free flow, secure trade of the products internationally. So it has initiated this program called as Authorized Economic Operator Program. What does it do through this? Through this, various organizers, where organizers of trade, they are given this Authorized Economic Operator mark, right? So through this mark, they can carry out their trade, right? Import, export, etc. very easily, right? Because they are marked like this, there will be a secure connection, there will be a level of trust by the government on these particular operators, not only that, there will be a smoother movement of goods, smoother movement of goods, right? There will be less checking of their goods. So these are the uh, important things here. What is the update? The update here is that the Indian Custom Organization, which is the Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Custom, it has launched online filing. Now online filing of the same uh, AEO applications. Earlier it was offline, now they have converted it to online, right? So what about this organization is that it ensures the supply chain the supply chain security of the goods and ensures the legitimate goods transfer okay as i explained it ensures that we avoid terrorism in these activities right for example supply of drugs guns etc revenue is collected and trade is carried out in the best possible manner this ensures ease of doing business right how does it ensure fewer examinations clearance time is reduced improved security and communication one of the most important aspect in uh, trade is the turnaround time. Turnaround time is the time in which the ships come to a port and then get back from this port, right? So logistics time is one of the important times here and custom time is also important here. Now custom time gets reduced if the whole process is automated, if the whole process is ensured that it is carried out with trust, if there are tags given to authorized and the authorized economic operators are also used. So this is the main significance of this program. Now in India, three types of tags are given to these kind of operators, AEO, T1, T2 and T3. All you got to know are very important and few important terms here. For example, the port delivery, port entry of these AEOs will be facilitated. This is one. 
The second one is deferred payments. If there is some payment which is due, it will still be recognized and it will be made due. The ships will not be asked to stay back till the payment is made. So this is another one. Mutual recognition agreements. Both the countries will recognize. For example, India and Malaysia, if they are doing this trade and both of these countries have uh, X AEO, right? So both the countries will recognize that this X EO is present and doing trade between countries. So this will get facilitated for X. Duty drawback. Now, what is duty drawback? Now, there are operators. For example, there is a trader Y. They will not only participate in export of product, they will also import products, right? So, when they export and import products for the country, there are certain incentives given to them. There is a drawback of duty. Whatever duty they have paid, it is also given back to them at times in form of incentive. So, these are all facilitated for the for the AEOs, Authorized Economic Operators. This is all is their significance. So this is how it helps by certifying them, by ensuring secure and reliable trading, right? It saves time and saves time is cost, time is money. So it saves cost for them. So this is how it all, all operates. And at the end, it ensures that ease of doing business is facilitated. This is the third snapshot for today. Image of the day again from Italy. Now this image is of the glacier, the glacier called as Presena Glacier. Now what do we see in this image? The whole glacier, right, which is melting with time, especially during summers, now it has been covered with cloth. It has not been covered for the cloth for the first time, it has been covered for, with the cloth since 2008. And the main idea has been to ensure that the melting of ice gets reduced. So through this activity, melting of ice gets reduced as much as 70%. And since this cloth reflects the sunlight and sun's radiations, less of global warming will happen at this, a this area and less of melting of ice will happen. This is going to aid the action against global warming. The first term and concept for today is lymphatic filariasis. So filariasis in common terms is elephantiasis. This is a disease when a mosquito bite can lead to even inflammation and abnormal enlarge enlargement of a body part. For example, feet. We have seen this happen. Now how does this happen? This is a disease when even a child infected with this disease can result into a person getting this enlargement of body organ at maturity. Right, so the incubation period can be even years, even 10 years. A child infected with this disease can show the impact of disease even 10 years after the impact, uh, 10 years after the injection. So this disease spreads through mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are the vectors through which it spreads. Aedes and Anopheles, all of them spread it. So actual spread is the spread of the roundworm. They not only reside in the body, they act as parasite in the body and they stay at the lymph nodes and this is where they attack. What are lymphs? Lymph nodes and lymph fluid. Lymph, uh, these are important components of the body which ensure that the fluid proportion in the body is retained. They also ensure that the immunity of body is retained. Immunity. And by attacking this part of the body, the roundworms ensure that immunity is reduced and there is inflammation. What does it result into? It results into diseased, right? Uh, 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 an important organ which is malfunctioning, it also results in social ostracization, right? The person who is having this disease is also looked down upon, right? So there are social impacts also. What is the government doing right now? The government has in initiated a program to eliminate filariasis diseases. So there are preventive measures taken and people are given medication in preventive capacity, right? And Maharashtra government has unpaused this program after COVID impact. So this is the news. Maharashtra government which has started to uh, give the drugs for elimination of this disease. The second term and concept for today is GI certified Bhalia wheat. Now this wheat special about it is that it has high protein content and it is sweet. But what is behind this news? Behind the, the, this news is Bhal region and the export. Now why are we exporting wheat items to the countries? The first thing is requirement. Because of COVID impact, a lot of export of food items has increased during COVID and had, it has added to India's advantage as well. So this time Kenya and Sri Lanka are importing wheat from India. Good quality wheat. And the second one is Bhal, Bhal region. What is this Bhal region? This Bhal region is a part of Gujarat state and Bhal traditionally means flat terrain. So this Bhal region is the brown area, the brown segment of the 
uh, peninsula that we see this has Ahmedabad district then we have Bhavnagar district and some important Anand district etc in this area the rivers here drain into the Gulf of Khambat right so the best part about this Bhal region GI certified wheat is that it is grown in rain fed conditions wheat usually is grown by providing irrigation but this is rain fed wheat and even good in quality the third term and concept for today is Sparsh now this is an important uh, uh, scheme of the government and this relates to Ministry of Defense so important term and concept relating to Ministry of Defense system for pension administration Raksha the whole system has been automated and the process of sanctioning the process of the claim has been made automated right also they are pension portal where information is provided for people of Ministry of Defense to claim their pension also a service center with two important stakeholders the SBI and PNB so they will provide service to the people who demand pension from the government especially for Ministry of Defense so remember the word Sparsh Ministry of Defense pensions STI led brick innovation corporation action plan 2021-2024 so this plan ensures that STI science technology and innovation are shared between the BRIC members countries right so they have 10 thematic areas in which there will be cooperation of sharing of information data regarding these 10 areas what are these 10 areas now transient astronomical events transient means the one which happened for a small time and they transit deep survey science what is deep survey now deep survey is the one where astronomical events and objects are observed and only faint very faint light is observed around them so deep survey science Antimicrobial resistance, we understand this very word. Big data analytics, innovation and entrepreneurship on photonics, dealing with light and nanophotonics and metamaterials, right? So, for biomedicine, energy harvesting, and food industry. So, this is what is the four term and concept. We must understand the important agenda for the research, their technology and innovation based research editorials of the day the three editorials here are interesting one the first one is about Italy again now Italy has participated with India and Japan in the Indo-Pacific region India this article mentions acknowledges the presence of India in the Indian Indo-Pacific region and Indo-Pacific region as declared by India is right from the east of Africa continent to Japan now this whole area cannot be administered by India alone India needs support of important role players one of them is quad and other one is the European Union right participation of European Union cannot be all the time done through Union it can also be done through important countries associations right formed with smaller countries for example Italy in this time right we have also discussed in one of the editorials how the European Union is associating with India in the Gulf region to ensure that food the food world food program gets carried out very well and to secure the energy supplies in the Middle East so all these countries have associated to form a union and carry out naval exercises this was the first exercise carried out between European Union and India in the Gulf region right so this is what it says it also mentions that G20 now presently Italy is the chair for G20 and next year India will be the chair so this will be a beautiful transition between India and Italy when they participate in protection of the Indo-Pacific region ensuring that there is open openness in the freedom of navigation the second snapshot is on UPA's shortcomings we have discussed this snapshot when it was in use when Delhi High Court provided its judgment on three activists right the main issue here is about the definition of terrorism when terrorism is defined for small causes as well for example vandalizing of public property now this the vandalizing of public property can be implicated under different sections of IPC why use terrorist the word terrorist for those people right so in this article the article mentions about three activists which were released after the Delhi riot cases only lately after one year of this the second case was of Stan Swami and the third one is of Sai Baba from Gachiroli now Sai Baba was an important person who was mediating between the government and the Naxal, Naxal movement in the Gachiroli region and he was later implicated in UAPA Naxal literature was found at his end right now Stan Swami he was also implicated in 2020 and he passed away recently he was one of the oldest persons who was caught in this UAPA uh, UAPA right so the article criticizes the UAPA overall and says 
that the whole process is such that the process itself is a penalty there may not be a proper conclusion to this uh, to this law law making process there may not be a conclusion to the whole process but the process itself the jailing of people and the asking for bail and rejection of bail this is the whole penalty to the people there is a very small conviction rate of 2% only in these type of cases right and therefore role of court needs to get enhanced this is where the article appreciates delhi high court where the delhi high court has given some particular guidelines to the government to ensure that uapa is not utilized in all the cases the third editorial is on the ministry of cooperation and the whole history behind its formation it talks about the times of 1950s and 60s when vargis korean initiated the dairy cooperative movement and after that there were issues with the whole cooperative movement because it was oriented towards one the issues of election right elections were not carried out at various places regularly right second the expenses right now was it a profit making body or was it a profit sharing body this was another issue here right and then we had farm producer companies and later on this initiative later propagated to other places in the country as well right for example fertilizer movement for example the tribal cooperation agriculture etc so this article talks about the whole movement spreading and the way it spread in the historical context case study of the day today's case study is on the tuber man of india who was awarded india biodiversity award 2021 This award is given by the Ministry of Environment in association with UNDP UN Development Project not Environment Project and this award is in many categories but this gentleman was given the award in the conservation for domestic domesticated species category he is from Wynad and his name is Shaji NM what has he done he has saved and conserved a lot of tuber crops now tuber crops are majorly the ones which are grown under the ground for example potato sweet potato etc so he has conserved 200 varieties of these crops right passionately he has also entered the interiors of the forest and he has ensured that the tribal crops are also conserved with him right so he ensured food security in many ways right what is the main idea what is the what is the thing that we learn from this we learn the spirit of altruism right doing without ensuring what is brought back to me right he also educates children through this initiative and and he is not very well educated he has expert in this field so he has wisdom without proper education right what do we understand through this for the exam that we have sdg 2 protection right that is that talks about zero hunger right climate action life on land that means it re re it reduces desertification as well consumption and production to be responsible so this is what we understand through this initiative of the tuber man so this is mr shaji from wynard kerala